Hello, welcome. I'm State Senator Susan Rubio. I represent the 22nd Senate District. I'm so honored to be here with you today and thank you to all of you have who have joined us. Uh, I really am honored to represent you, but my hope is that you get to know your communities a little bit better. The goal of this community conversation is to engage our community, highlight some of the great projects that are being done in our communities and programs that can benefit our residents. I also hope to inspire civic engagement to get our community more engaged to volunteer, to seek out opportunities where they can help our community become a better place to live. And also, um, again, asking questions from our local leaders. I hope that you get to know them, get to appreciate all the work that gets done behind the scenes. I used to be a council member for many years, so I know that a lot of the work that gets done sometimes goes unnoticed. We know that we do it because we care, but hopefully you'll get to see what your electeds are doing and you get to appreciate the, the work that they're doing on your behalf and inspire the community pride. I know all of us have pride for our community, but it could only only make us all better when we listen to everything that's going on in our community, especially those um, that, that need to be more engaged. This is a great way to learn about local restaurants, local businesses. And again, I'm so honored to have local leaders join us. I will be doing this throughout the 22nd Senate District. And so finally, my last goal here is to have other elected leaders from across the 22nd Senate District hear about some of the great projects and programs and not reinvent the wheel. I think that this is a, a way to share best practices and, and hopefully replicate some of the great work that some of these local leaders are already doing. So thank you once again for, for joining us today. Uh, today I have the honor of speaking with Mayor Emanuel Estrada. He, um, let me read a little bit of his bio. Emanuel Estrada was first elected in November of 2020, one of the youngest mayors. I also have the privilege of knowing uh, uh, one of the first youngest mayors, which was Vidal Vargas. I believe he was 23 when he was elected. Uh, he's a proud son of immigrant parents working and a working class mother. Uh, and he has credited his work ethic to his strong um, mother and some of the principles that, that she taught him. A Baldwin Park native, he graduated from Sierra Vista High School and then went on to study automotive services at the Baldwin Park Adult School. Uh, it also gives me great pride as a teacher. I also taught at uh, Sierra Vista High School and Baldwin Park High School for a short period of time. So I'm glad to see someone graduating from our, our schools become leaders in our community. He holds a certificate in accounting and is currently finishing his bachelor's in market, marketing. Mayor Estrada, thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm so honored to have you and, and to highlight some of the things that are happening. And so I just wanna make sure that you understand how honored I am to have someone as young as you really want to make a difference in our community. So. You know, I'll let you say hello. I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah. So hi to everybody. And then, of course, hello to you, Senator. I am very excited to be here as well. And it's a neat conversation, right? Because as, as, as we've kind of been mentioning, and as you mentioned earlier, you come, you live in Baldwin Park. So you're a Baldwin Park resident. So you are aware of a lot of things that go on in the city. And you've been a, a, a big influence in what goes on in the city. And, and so you'll, so as we go through this conversation, I think we'll be able to kind of see how things connect and how things kind of go full circle. So, you know, I think it's gonna be a really nice conversation. It'll be really neat. And then, you know, it's, it's exciting to be able to talk to a Senator who actually lives down the street from me. We are pretty close together, we're neighbors. So, um, you know, sometimes I find this when I tell people I live in Ballin Park, they're pretty shocked because sometimes we think of our state electeds as these foreign entities, someone we can't connect with, someone we don't know. And they get to see me in the supermarket, sometimes at the coffee shops. And, you know, it just gives me great pride when they say, I didn't know you lived here, number one. And the common question I get is you shop here, which of course, you know, it's my career community. I want to always support our local stores and our local venues. But again, it gives me great pride to be from Ballin Park, but also represent the entire 22nd Senate District. So I want to turn over to some of the issues that we are facing currently. Um, as you know, housing and homelessness continues to be a big issue. I know that when I was a council member, it was pretty frustrating when we had so many ideas and, and Financially, sometimes it's not possible, but but I know that since you've taken office, you've been able to do a lot of things in that space. And so I'll turn it over to you. Why don't you please share some of the things that you're working on, some of the accomplishments, what can residents expect moving forward? Yeah, so as we all know, housing is, 
it's vital, right? It's vital. It's the stability. It's the foundation to the rest of our lives. So if how if your housing situation isn't stable, the rest of your life may not be stable, right? Uh, you know, as as housing uh, as housing costs rise, we know that you know there's less money. So that means that there's less money for you to enjoy uh, the city. There's less money for you to spend locally. There's less money for you to eat healthier, and there's less money for you to stay healthy in general. So um, you know, we've been very very active here in the city of Baldwin Park, uh, making sure that we that we take notice of the needs of our residents. So not only building housing, but also looking at the type of housing that's needed for the people that are already here. Um, so some of the biggest things that we've done up to date is we've, we, we have a big, big partnership with Habitat for Humanity, which I'm very excited about. Um, they've been really good, you know, they've been great partners, they've been great neighbors, and we've set some, some really good plans afoot. So uh, our biggest um, project started uh, when I first came in, we acquired five parcels that were all put together. We uh, joined with Habitat, and we're looking to build uh, 12 affordable homes, not just not for renting, but for home ownership. And you know, home ownership is something that doesn't get talked about a lot uh, in the affordable field, where we, we keep talking about more of renting. But affordable home ownership is going to uh, change things in in a very uh, important way. You know, with affordable home ownership, um, with programs like those that Habitat offers, the community is going to be able to be able to afford their own home. Get, get stability, not just for themselves, but for the future generations. And we're putting them on path for generational wealth, which we know is, is very important. So I'm very excited about that. Um, that was our first project with them. So all in all, we've invested $5 million. Um, we've invested another 3.5 uh, into affordable um, home repair programs for, for people who are homeowners now and who uh, may need the help. Uh, of course, and they have to qualify and go through a little bit of a process. And then we've invested, the majority of that is going to go towards acquisition rehab, which means that we are going to look for homes that might be a little bit older, they're on the market. Um, Habitat will take those in, they'll fix them up, um, and then convert them into a, a affordable home ownership opportunities for the community. So we're taking something that's been in the community for a long time, instead of demolishing it and, and trying to start from scratch, we're taking that, we're recycling it, making it look nicer than it was before. Uh, rehabilitating it and then handing it, handing the keys over to a family. So uh, those are some of the biggest things that we're doing uh, in, in, in housing. We know that housing is a, is a multi-pronged approach. So it's not just about helping people get ahead. It's also making sure that people don't fall back, right? We want to make sure that we put preventative measures in place. We're talking about um, homelessness. And so this is kind of where we start connecting, right? Uh, Senator, you authored uh, the bill to create the Regional Housing Trust here in the San Gabriel Valley. That um, so uh, it goes under the the Council of Governments, um, and that's how we were able to build our tiny homes. So our tiny homes is the first uh, tiny home project in the San Gabriel Valley, which puts a big spotlight on Baldwin Park for taking what is practically immediate action. Um, you know, things kind of get slowed down in the chambers and how we vote, and um, you know, there's there's a lot of paperwork to it. But all in all, uh, and Public Works did a great job, and the rest of the team. Uh, Public Works and, and all of our other uh, contractors got this done in less than four months. So from the time the shovel hit to the time we were able to open it up and let people in, uh, less than four months, which I think is, I mean, it's unheard of, right? We always hear it takes a little bit longer when we're trying to build, um, you know, the the the, the uh, general way. So that's our, our first project. And we were able to do that because we got a grant from um, the Regional Housing Trust for a uh, million dollars. I think it's a, it was 1.1. Um, so that's, I mean, if, if uh, I think you you saw it uh, firsthand, so you know how amazing it looks. It looks great. That was a lot that was a kind of a not taken care of. So now it looks a lot better. And then I'm excited to say that that led to our our second project, which um, so we'll, we'll we've acquired a second site. We've are able to um, uh, lock in another grant from the from the regional housing trust. This one is for 1.25 million dollars, uh, and this is just for the construction of it. So we're looking at, at creating a, a, uh, a tiny home shelter for families. So we know that families with young children are also struggling and we want to be able to uh, give them a place that's safe and warm and they have access to hygiene and, and everything else that they may need to find that permanent source of housing. Well, thank you, uh, Mayor. Just um, a little bit of when I started running, I also um, went knocking on doors and one of the overwhelming arching themes is always housing and homelessness. And so early on, I knew that that was an issue that I needed to tackle. And for any other city listening out there, uh, you know, I did 
create the regional housing trust and I was able to put $26 million so far in the housing trust and mayor thank you for taking advantage of that you were one of the first to take advantage in terms of housing for homeless individuals and I believe it's 25 individuals that you were able to take off the streets and immediately give them housing and I know that we talk about helping the homeless it's always a struggle and that was a great uh, way to do it very innovative and so I want to thank you for your courage. Uh, it does take courage to break those barriers. I know that not everyone was happy about it, but once um, Esperanza Villa, which is called, uh, got going, I got a lot of calls uh, actually thanking me and thanking you for, for having the courage to, to do this. But I always say it's you. Local leaders are the ones that affect change. And I could only help a little bit. It's you taking the, the helm, you pushing forward. And, and you're right. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, time to develop these projects, especially locally. There's always differences of opinions in different councils, but your council and you uh, with your leadership, you guys were able to do this. And I'm very happy that I see some of the homeless individuals already, um, you know, beaming with pride, just looking for the next step. And I know that eventually you, you will be providing a workforce development, trying to figure out how you help them uh, to the next step. And that means getting the help that they need, making sure that if there is a, a training program that we can put these individuals in so they can, uh, again, seek other employments. I think that is wonderful what you're doing and thank you so much. I wanna also thank the entire council who's not here, but you're certainly a representative for that because it takes everyone to be on board. And uh, so anyone that was in there, uh, we, we did have, I, I'm sorry, I say we, I like to say we because I'm from Baldwin Park, but you, you had this um, uh, groundbreaking ceremony and it was amazing to see so many community leaders from Congresswoman Judy Chu to our supervisor Hilda Solis join and, and, and many local leaders from different cities. So I hope it doesn't stop there and I hope other cities uh, want to take advantage of it. So I'll continue to push on my end. And so I hope that you as local leaders continue to push as well. So thank you. So now I wanna go to the next topic that I wanted to discuss, which is personal to me as well, but I'll turn it over to you so you can share a little bit of open space. We know that Baldwin Park is nestled between three freeways. And that means that our poor inner city families are usually the ones that uh, bear the brunt of all the toxicity from the freeways. We have a lot of families with asthma and other issues that come from such unclean, healthy air. And so I want to turn it over to you to share what are you working on, what's coming down the pike, and what do you want uh, families in Baldwin Park to know? Yeah, so as we know, um, and it's been detailed before in the report, uh, Baldwin Park is, is park poor, right? Um, we should have 3.3 acres of space for every 1,000 people and we're at 0.3, so we're a, a little bit behind, <clears throat> excuse me. But, you know, we've done a lot and, you know, we've been able to get a lot of things done. Uh, we're currently working on a five mile uh, bike trail. Uh, it's gonna be along the Big Dalton Wash. It will be the Big Dalton Wash Trail. And then there we will build uh, four pocket parks. So this will increase a little bit of green space, a little bit of riding space, a little bit of walking space, jogging space for, uh, for a different part of the community. Um, you know, as you know, we, we want to make sure that uh, there's there's something for every neighborhood so that nobody in the area or anybody in the city feels that they aren't being uh, represented or being taken care of. Uh, this makes it so that people have more access to green space. So somebody who might not live near Morgan Park but lives near the Big Dalton Wash will be able to walk there and, and enjoy some greenery. Um, we're expanding Barnes Park. So Barnes Park is getting a, um, a, a massive uh, renovation. So it will add a dog park on one end uh, we're looking to capture water to save water as well, and then uh, we're, we've uh, acquired the properties on on the right hand side. If you're facing it um, towards the freeway, we've acquired the two properties to the right, and then we'll expand the park. We'll add some uh, mini futsal, which uh, people love soccer here, so I think that'll help. We'll add some uh, picnic area, some some more green space, and I, I think even some parking space to make sure that people are able to to get to it and and have access to it. Um, and then of course we are building the Socalo which is very nice. And that's another one where things kind of come full circle, um, you know, and we were able to do it with, with your help. You've, you've brought in the funds, uh, you brought in $6 million. And then you were also one of the, you were also one of the main people uh, on the council uh, back in the day that helped uh, set that image, uh, not the, the idea of the Socalo. So it's, it's very neat, right? And so it's also nice to see, you know, I'm sure it's also nice for you because you were part of that. You, you led that effort and now you're able to go to the state and then bring the bring the money in to make it happen. So again, thank you for uh, take 
in the leadership and that. And that. Uh, I do know that at the time when I was a council member, we did have uh, charrettes, which means you go to every corner of the community and ask what they want to see. And, and again, the community uh, overwhelmingly said they wanted this park done. And I think that for those listening from Baldwin Park, uh, the reason the word Sokalo came to be is that uh, in areas, um, in other areas, in other countries, a Sokalo, a Sokalo represents a community park where people just gather. It's not necessarily to play baseball or soccer, but it's more an opportunity to come with your grandkids, just sit down, have a cup of coffee. And it's just such a great opportunity for us to, to engage as a community. Again, this is a goal to have more community engagement. But I will share this. Uh, and when I was on the council, one of the things that I always think of is when someone visits your home, the first thing they, they do is sort of see what your front yard looks like. And I always envision that park to be our front yard. When people come to our community, they want to see a nice waterfall, a nice park area. And uh, and I think that you have accomplished that and you're pushing forward with this project. And again, full circle, as you mentioned, sometimes we all have great ideas locally, but the funding continues to be a challenge. So now as a state senator, I'm so proud that I'm able to help our communities and bring $6 million to, to to Fallen Park in particular, but there's also La Puente, another community who lacks open space, and, and, and uh, I wanted to be able to be helpful. They also needed some funding to close the gap on a park that they had designed but couldn't get done because they were missing funds, and I was also fortunate enough to be able to fight for them, and I was able to bring them $6 million to build their park, and we're going to continue you to push. Um, not only does it help our community in terms of better air quality to make sure that, that our children are healthy, our seniors are healthy, there's so many benefits. And so I th think that it's important that we continue to push on that end. And I know you've been a strong advocate. If I remember correctly, I think that was your platform when you ran, you wanted to add more open space and, and you've done that. So thank you. I have to say, even as a senator, and resident and former council member, I'm learning a lot from you, from everything that you're sharing. So I hope everyone else is also listening and learning from you. Uh, but I would like to go back to the earlier question. When you were talking about housing and, and what you're doing, you did mention that you have uh, $3.5 million for a, a program for a home rehabilitation. I just wanted to give you the opportunity to share with our community, where can they find that information? What would be the easiest way to find out if they qualify? How do they go about getting these funds? Yes, great point. So I know uh, every time I share it, people get excited, they wanna know. So uh, the best way to do it is to uh, check out the San Gabriel Valley Habitat for Humanities website uh, and keep an eye out. So they do have a period where you can apply and get on the list and um, and then they'll, once you once it's your turn, they'll go through the process with you. It is like any other mortgage, except it's a little bit more uh, a lot more accessible, I would say. Uh, so it is like a mortgage. So they're going to want to make sure that you have good credit, that you've been uh, your your debt to loan ratio is is not too high, and that uh, you are going to be able to take care of that mortgage uh, because they want you to they want you to succeed, right? They want to make sure that you're prepared for this. Home ownership is uh, something serious. And special, so they want to make sure that you're able to enjoy enjoy that uh, opportunity. So yes, and I believe that I'm not entirely sure, but I believe that the application process might open uh, within the next two months, and it, I, it, I think it's a 90 day period. So uh, you can follow them on social media as well, and I'm sure they'll post about it. And then you know the city is very invested in this, so we will probably post about it as well. So make sure you follow the social media of the city and Habitat. Well, thank you. And I also, you know, I think you mentioned it first. It does build generational wealth, and so I hope that it. It's something that you can continue, uh, not be the last thing that you do. So for anyone out there that's younger than our parents that can continue to, you know, focus on cleaning up their credit, as you said, sometimes we don't know until it's there. And this is a way for our youth who are currently possibly getting married and building their, their families to, to figure out how to build their credit, to make sure that they're able to qualify for these programs. So again, I hope to partner with more funding and, and help you out in that way. Oh, I see you have a little bit of a guest there. Can you yeah. introduce your little guest there? I have a special guest right here. He just came in. That's Mayor Junior. Say hi. Hi, Mayor. Hi, Junior. This is exactly <laughs> what I want to see. We want to see our elected leaders, you know, the human side of them. You are a father. And uh, can you share how old and a little bit about your family. Yeah, so he's four years old. He's about to turn five in a couple of months. Um, so right now he's, he's, he's staying at home today and hanging out with me. And then, you know, when he, when he has free time, I like to take him with me and he loves to roam city hall as well, which I think is good for him. 
um, you know, we'll see if he likes uh, city work and who knows, he might, he might go the, the government route one day, right? Well, I often say, if you can't see it, you cannot believe it. So hopefully he sees you in that leadership role and someday he will want to run not only your son, but all our community uh, youth that they can see that someone like yourself uh, and someone like myself can be in positions of leadership and to be able to affect change in a positive way. So hopefully we'll see him as mayor one day. So thank you for sharing that part of your family and that personal. Yeah, of course. Of yeah. He loves to jump in on the Zooms. Um, and it's so okay. He came over. Yeah, of course. Get him used to it because I'm sure he's going to have to do it. So. No, but you know, nowadays when we're all working from home and we're all doing Zooming, you know, you see that a lot. And I think that it it helps us understand each other better. I see a lot of mothers constantly when I'm on Zoom, their children come on and I often say, let them. I think it's okay and it's been accepted. We see it on the news media. If you ever see a weatherman or a newscaster, we've had a lot of children invading our space and that's okay. We want to make sure that they see that. We're working hard and uh, and hopefully they take a lead from us and, and want to do what we do someday, right? Yeah. So and I do, go ahead. Oh, sorry. But I think it's, it's great, right? Because we do have to humanize, um, you know, uh, people who are in, in higher roles than us and, and leadership roles. And, you know, they're, they're no different than us. And that's one of the things that I've tried to show people, like, you know, the mayor, council, they're no different than you. Just like you, you know, I have a family. Just like you, I have a, a full-time job. You know, just like you, I like to do fun stuff and enjoy the city and, and want to do things. Right. Um, you know, I'm not always wearing a suit. I, I like to be comfortable as well. And, I, you know, I just just like any everybody else. And I think it's important, especially, you know, we're talking about our we're talking about, um, you know, kind of disparities in, in working class communities. And we want to make sure that we give that, um, you know, that we show our young children what they can be, you know, regardless of where they come from. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you. I love to see families. And so. I get to meet your son today, so that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so I want to turn it over to the next piece, piece that I feel we, we have a lot of challenges in our community. I used to be the elected city clerk. Uh, I'm not sure a lot of people know that, and that meant that I was responsible for, for running the elections and helping candidates like yourself fill out the paperwork. And more importantly, after elections, um, you know, we are responsible for, well, at the time, of course, um, sharing with the, the public how, the outcome of elections. And so that's uh, an issue that I want to continue to push on. And I want also to give you an opportunity to share what opportunities is there for our community to be more civically engaged. Um, there's all sorts of opportunities. And I, and I want to start off by, um, you know, making sure that the community understands that, you know, it's, it's up to them and it really is up to them to get involved and make sure that they are aware of things that are going on at City Hall. Uh, it's important that we all make our own, um, that we don't get our own impression about what's going on at City Hall and anywhere else. You know, I, I ran for mayor because I understood that, you know, all the the, the things that, that affect you on the daily really are here at home, right? We pay a lot of attention to Congress, we pay a lot of attention to the president. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's your city council that's going to decide uh, what your city's going to look like for the next 100 years. If, you're gonna, if your county's going to be here for the next, well, you know, next year or 10 years. And so there's, there's a lot of things that come into play at City Hall. Um, first, and the, the best way to do it is to also, uh, for one, for starters, to make sure that you show up to city council meetings. Uh, it is now more easier than ever. We have it on YouTube. We have it on our Vaughn Park website. And, uh, and then uh, when the chambers aren't closed, currently they are because of uh, COVID, but when they aren't, you're, you're more than welcome to show up to the special meeting at five o'clock and then our regular meeting at seven o'clock. Voice, voice your opinion, ask questions, learn about the process. I know that um, sometimes government can get a little tricky and we don't exactly understand how things work. Uh, but there's ways to do it, right? And, and it takes a little bit of time and, and little by little, um, you can do that as well. We're um, making sure that the city is transparent with what we do. We're making sure that uh, our social media is accessible and that we try to share things with people, remind them that there's city council meetings or that we're going to have a public input meeting, um, you know, and, and things like that. Uh, we currently, um, one, of my, one of my favorite things this year is that we've just acquired a, um, a new budgeting software. Um, so uh, it's going to, I think it comes with a, a little bit of a, some some side um, uh, I can't even speak today. So I think it comes with a little bit of uh, extra features that um, will help uh, sh uh, explain to the community how the budget works, and they'll be able to see it in a graph, and and hopefully that helps them understand as well. Because you know budgets are important, um, and helping people understand why money is going the way it goes is also important. But we want people to be sure to ask those questions and feel comfortable asking those questions. And who knows, right? They they could be the next mayor. You know. Senator, I met you when you were a council member, and I was showing up to the city council to, to uh, express my concerns. So, you know, the, we, we don't know um, 
But yeah, and those are another opportunity, right? Civic engagement is anywhere from you asking questions to getting involved and it's up to you to decide how involved you want to be. Um, but, you know, I want to make it very clear that, you know, it's, it's completely accessible for everybody to get involved. Um, it's just, um, I've always said that government is a two-way street, right? As elected, it's our duty to make sure that we're listening to the community and that we're um, uh, sharing with them what's going on, but it's also important that the community stays involved and make sure that what they want to see happen, uh, they push for it. Yeah, that is so important. I, I agree with you. Um, when I was a council member, uh, we, we tried to invite you know, our residents to join and it's not always possible. So I'm glad that now that we've discovered Zooming and all these other platforms so that our communities can listen to council meetings. I think it's, it's even more important than ever to participate. It's become a little bit more accessible. But I want to share a little bit uh, of when I was a, a city clerk, the elected city clerk, and I, don't quote me on this. It's been probably uh, 14 years now or almost 15 years now. So, But I remember clearly at the time, I was a little shocked. Um, I believe at the time we had approximately 75,000 residents. Uh, and I think at the time we had about 30,000 people that were registered to vote. And then when the election came around, we had about Five to 6,000 people voting on that election. So I used to try to educate some of our members of the community to say, you have four to 6,000 people making decisions for you, making decisions for 75,000 residents. And so I wanted to put it in perspective because we don't think about these things. Um, you know, and I also have people sometimes coming up to me as a senator saying, you know, I want you to fix my street or the pothole. And, and I have to educate them about you know, jurisdictions, right? That's a local jurisdiction issue. So I always encourage them to go to their council members and share some of the concerns. And I know that it's not um, something that's easily um, accessible for residents to understand what happens in government. Um, so I also wanna share, I was a teacher for 17 years and my job was to teach third graders how a government system works. You know, I would have to teach them what a mayor does, council members, your police department, uh, you know, parks and rec. So there's so much to learn and it does happen in third grade. It's part of the curriculum. But I would, you know, argue sadly that once we become adults, it's hard to remember, you know, what we did last year, let alone what we learned in third grade. So I keep educating people, uh, encouraging them to participate. I do a lot of conversations, talks with uh, young ladies who also want to follow my lead. And they ask, you know, how do we get involved? How do we uh, become elected leaders? And one of my suggestions has always been to get involved in local government uh, by way of volunteering. Uh, but secondly, we have so many great commissions. And I know a lot of commissioners in Bowen Park are listening. So I want to also take a, a moment to thank all of you. I think Cecilia Bernal is listening and a few others. There's so much that happens behind the scenes and a lot of work and personal time that gets put into these commissions, but we learn to work together. We learn to share ideas. Um, and that's how things happen in our communities. There's commissions where you can apply. Uh, they're always on the website, if I'm not mistaken, Mayor, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, when these commissions are up, you know, there's ways of applying and to see if you have the privilege and opportunity to serve as a local commissioner. That always gives you an insight as to how government works and whether or not you want to be in, le in leadership. That was a little bit of what happened to me. I, I got elected first as a, a local uh, city clerk and our job is to be there responsible for the agenda, uh, sit on the dais and listen to the commentary whether it is uh, residents complaining about an issue or praising the council about um, something they did. Either way, it was a great educational uh, time for me. It was four years that I spent as a local city clerk and it was a great learning experience. And I know that it was that time that I spent locally as a council member and city clerk that has made me um, a little bit more aware of how government works. And when I went to the state Senate, it was, easy for me to understand the issues because I spent 13 years learning about it. And so, again, I wanna encourage all of you listening that are interested in government, uh, whether you're a young lady or a young man, you, you have to get involved as the mayor stated. Um, the council meetings are open for anyone to, to go visit. So that is your right. And, and hopefully you not only get involved, but really exercise that one powerful voice we have, and that's the ability to, to vote and affect change. If you're not happy with one thing or another, you, you have the opportunity to 
to get involved and decide, but don't let a small portion of our community decide for almost 75,000 residents. So uh, thank you, Mayor, for sharing the ways that people can get involved. And I know you were one of those. You were there holding us accountable. Um, you know, we don't always like to hear that we're not doing the best job, but believe me, when you go and you express what you want to express, you know, we listen. Our, our hope and our goal is to, to listen and try to do better by the community and you know, we don't like to be yelled at and, and, you know, but I'll say this, you know, that is your right. And our job is to be uh, responsive. Our job is to listen to your concerns. And I know that, Mayor, I'll say this, a lot of times we work hard, like you, I've seen you work really hard, our parks and recs, our council members, and often we don't get the recognition or the, or the thank yous that I feel like you and the council currently deserve. But I hope that um, as members of the community start getting involved and start getting engaged, mm -hmm. you do say thank you once in a while when you see our local leaders um, at events, thank them for the work they do. Uh, it is a lot of personal sacrifice. As the mayor just stated, he has his family. He has a full-time job. And I, a lot of the times mm -hmm. people don't understand that it is a part-time job but you do a full-time job at the same time because you're working weekends, nights, and uh, it's nonstop. But again, you do it because you you love the work that you do and the, and the community um, is also appreciative of what you do and sometimes it doesn't get expressed. So so thank you for everything that you do, again, for your, your entire council who couldn't be here, but you're here representing them, to all the parks and recs, all the commissioners for every single department. We're so proud of the work that you're doing and it gives me great pride. Uh, and that's what we hope to inspire pride in our communities. So I will um, wrap it up because I wanna make sure that you have the opportunity, Mayor, to highlight some of these you know, wonderful restaurants that we have or businesses that we have that, that you might wanna promote. I know they're all great and they're all fantastic, but is there one that you visited lately or someone that may be needing a little help during the pandemic that you wanna elevate and promote? Go ahead and give us your, your thoughts. Yeah, so how about, I have a couple. So how about I just tell you my favorite foods from each place. Sure. Um, you know, um, so everybody knows Tony's Donuts. Tony's Donuts has the biggest croissants and I've always been a big fan of croissants and pastrami. So I love pastrami and I love croissants and you can put both of them together at uh, Tony's Donuts and they have the best sandwiches. So, you know, if you want to eat pastrami, but you want to eat a little healthy with a little bit of tomatoes and, and lettuce and even avocado, you can add avocado there. So you, you can go to Tony's Donuts. Um, I like to pair that with a mineral water. That's one of my favorite drinks. Um, you know, Stars Burgers, the original, that's now on Badillo. I love their pastramis. That place is uh, the best. I've always said that they have the best pastrami. I've tried other pastramis and other well-known uh, restaurants that are in the region for pastramis. And I, I've always said that they can't compare to um, to, to Stars. And, and then they just have, you know, they have great uh, great service and they're such great people there. Um, another place, La Michoacana. I mean, if you want some, some good, you know, uh, Mexican uh, chucherias, you know, why not go to La Michoacana? They have... I, I, I walk out with my hands full all the time. So, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm getting to the age where I have to watch my calorie count. So, you know, I have to like, I have to really think like, should I really go in there? Cause you know, they have Diablitos, they have uh, hot Cheetos with cheese. Some of my favorite stuff, um, you know, but yeah, those are some of my favorite places. Miss tea. I love a uh, strawberry green tea with uh, rainbow jelly. If you haven't tried that, try it. And I think you could take a friend. I think that if you go to Miss tea, it's buy one, get one free. So you pay for one, you get one for, for your, uh, Whoever goes with you. So yes, and then we do have Sage, uh, our newest restaurant in the downtown, and they offer uh, they offer some vegan options. They offer some good or, or chata lattes, um, and they offer it. They offer a cuisine that we haven't seen in Baldwin Park lately. So they are a little bit different, and they're they're right in front of the Socalo, by the way. So I think they're going to pair perfectly with that plaza. So so those are some of the places I like to go to. Um, I just had Tony's Donuts actually yesterday. I, I believe yesterday the day before. So, but yeah. So Senator. When you're not in Sacramento, make sure you stop by those places. You can kind of do a quick run. They're all within the area and they're all in the downtown too. So you can enjoy the downtown. Well, it's very fitting. I, I decided to do this little conversation during lunch hour because I wanted to make sure that those that work and, and have an hour or half hour can tune in and, and hear your local leaders. Uh, but I want to talk about businesses. I think I saw you uh, at the opening of Broken Horn, I believe it was. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about businesses that are that are here that we need to continue to highlight and make sure that during the pandemic, we support our local businesses and local restaurants. So what businesses would you say we should go visit? Yeah, so by all means, you should visit all the local businesses. 
Um, but it's up to you, depending on, uh, you know, what, what you're feeling for. But if you're ready to get some uh, cowboy wear, if you're ready to get the, some new pair of botas, you know, it's uh, the Broken Horn has opened. They are open, I believe, uh, Wednesday through Sunday. They are closed uh, Monday and Tuesday. I don't recall at what time they open, but they close at six. So make sure you get there early. Make sure you get some nice uh, gear. I already got a Broken Horn, uh, broken horn shirt, so I'm, I'm ready to go. Um, the American Legion, you know, if you want to, if you want to spot a hang out on the weekends, I believe they're open to everybody on Fridays. So support your local American Legion. Um, and there's a couple of other businesses. So make sure that uh, regardless of, of which business you support, that you support them and you spend it locally. And, you know, as electeds, I think it's, it's our duty to make sure that we don't just say support your local businesses and, and tell you to do it and give them a little highlight, but also support them. Uh, from City Hall. So I do want to just uh, let you know, Senator, and I want to let the city know that the city had uh, our residents know that, our, that the city has been diligent in, in protecting our local businesses and helping them out. Um, if you're a local business owner or if you know a local business that's that's a small business uh, here in the city, they do qualify for um, for waived fees to help them uh, advertise their business on the Ballin Park now, which is a newsletter that goes to every single residence. Um, during the pandemic, we helped our, our small restaurants with um, outdoor dining. We had a grant. Uh, we spent thirty thousand uh, dollars helping them secure safe safe areas for people to take their food and eat outside. Um, so we you know we're doing everything we can for them. When the farmers markets come back, and we're hoping that they come back this year, I know that we're all eager to hang out and and you know just have some fun. Uh, if they come back this year, we've already allocated money to make sure that our local businesses can be part of our farmers market at no cost. So. Uh, not only are we supporting them as individuals, but we're supporting them as, as local leaders. And I want the community to be aware of that. Well, absolutely. And I have to say, uh, the farmer's market um, on Main Street is one of my favorite, favorite places to be. Um, I remember when I was a local council member, I was uh, part of the um, initial group that uh, wanted to see it happen. Um, I come from teaching uh, Monrovia Unified School District. If anybody's been there, they always have a, a, a farmer's market on their main street. And I and I said, our community deserves the same thing. And it's one of these places where you see everyone generationally from grandma to kids to brothers and sisters. And so I also want to make sure that uh, we promote it as much as we can. It is a great opportunity to see all your local businesses set up. Uh, they have set up little booths and anyone that listen to me right now could inquire it's uh we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity but mayor thank you for continuing that tradition and yes the pandemic has isolated us just a tiny bit so hopefully we get to see each other and hang out and and again i want to see our local community members one of my favorite things to see is our seniors they always show up for our events and you see them dancing on the streets and I always share with them, they outdance me. So how can that be fair? So I hope to grow up. I always tell them and be just like them. I can't keep up with their seniors. They're so active, they're so involved and uh, they're the life of the party. So hopefully we can learn something from them. Uh, Mayor, this has been a pleasure just learning so much that you're doing. I have to admit, I learned quite a bit. And so I hope those of you listening also learned quite a bit from your mayor and please take it back to your council members. I also wanna thank, thank them. I, they couldn't be here, uh, but I know that you are the representative and I wanna extend that. Thank you to everyone that's currently serving in the Baldwin Park um, City Council, but also our school boards and all our commissioners. It takes a, a village, as they say, right, for children, but it also takes a village to make a community the best that it can be. So uh, stay tuned for our next community conversation. And uh, hopefully you reach out to your mayor if you have any questions or anything that you want to follow up on. Mayor, do you want to give the website to make sure that folks know where to go? Yeah, so Ballin Park has the Ballin Park website, which is ballinpark.com. And then we also have our social media. So social media, you'll see a lot of advertising uh, for events, for public input, uh, for meetings, for things like that. And then you can also call City Hall. And then I also want all of you to know that your mayor tries his best to be within reach. I spend a lot of time at City Hall and uh, staff will tell you that because I like to ask them a lot of questions. Um, you know, but uh, but yeah, so and if you want to, so if you have any questions for the mayor, you can also reach out to me via social media. Um, or you can call the, the office. Our, our executive secretary is very good at relaying the messages and I can always return your call, or you can even set up an appointment with me. So now that I currently that we're here, I do want to let people know that the mayor does have a office hours uh, by appointment. So if you want to set up an appointment, ask me a question, a concern, you want to learn about what's going on or what we've done or what's in the works, by all means, I don't mind uh, spending time with our residents. 
Um, so yes, please get involved, ask questions. Senator, you brought a good point with our commissioners. Um, and I just want to quickly touch on this. For the first time uh, in a couple of years, all of our commissions are open. And we've been able to uh, diversify our, our representation by, by um, swearing in a multitude of, um, of residents into these commissions. Uh, some commission seats are still open. So I'm going to see with our city clerk to make sure that if uh, anybody's wanting to apply or interested in applying to some of these, uh, we give them the opportunity and we can completely fill our, our vacancies and have a 100% uh, filled commission all around. So please get involved, ask questions, uh, and 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 I, I hope that you are excited for a lot of the things that are coming to the downtown development is coming. Uh, I've you know we all hear you. We all we all want a, a, a nice uh, diverse downtown that we can enjoy, and that's one of our focuses. It will help. It would help alleviate a lot of things. It'll help make sure that you spend your money locally, that you enjoy your city, and that the city creates revenue as well to make sure that we are, that our services are well funded for you. So there you have it. If you want to get involved, they still have commissions open. So thank you for sharing. Uh, it's been a, a pleasure. Thank you for joining this uh, lunch hour uh, conversation with Mayor Estrada. And I hope to continue this with all the other communities as well. And uh, so stay tuned. Thank you so much. And I hope that everyone stays safe and healthy as we continue to navigate this pandemic. So thank you and have a wonderful day today. Thank you, Mayor. And I'll see you very soon. Yes, thank you, Senator, and thank you, everybody else.